لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله فاطر السماوات والأرض الحمد لله السميع والعليم والمحيط بكل شيء الحمد لله عدد خلقه وزنة عرشه وكمال كلماته وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا منازع له وحده لا ند له وحده لا شبيه له وحده لا شريك له وحده لا ولد له وحده لا مثيل له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا خاتم أنبياء الله ورسله صفي الله وخليله القائل إنما بعثت لأتمم مكارم الأخلاق صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وعلى من اصطفى من عباده من يطع الله ورسوله فلن يضل أبدا ومن يعص الله أو رسوله فلن يجد له وليا يرشده أما بعد أيها المسلمون عباد الله يقول الله هاديا ومرشدا ومعلما ولن ترضى عنك اليهود ولا النصارى حتى تتبع ملته قل إن هدى الله هو الهدى ولئن اتبعت أهواءهم بعد الذي جاءك من العلم ما لك من الله من ولي ولا نصير ويقول ود كثير من أهل الكتاب لو يردونكم من بعد إيمانكم كفارا حسدا من عند أنفسهم And there are many other ayat that illustrate to us the position that Ahl al-Kitab find within their nature to take against those who try to intimately reproduce the book of Allah in their lives, in their actions, 
actions, in their words, and in their deeds, in their statements, and in their positions, and in every beat of their heart. This lesson is hard to come by. As much experiences as the Muslims may undergo in their collective existence, it would be very hard for them to deduce the meanings of these ayat. And even in the presence of the Qur'an, and with the words of these ayat recited in prayers, in public, and in private, the Muslims have not yet learned the meanings of these ayahs. There is no degree of cooperation or coordination or exchange of mutual interests as they are expressed. No degree of these types of positions that connect so-called Muslim authorities and governments with Al-Yahud and Al-Nasara that will make them exchange mutual respect and recognition. The nature of their being and their existence as Ahl al-Kitab is to try to make Muslims subscribe, enlist, surrender, and give in totally and without any questions to the grand plans that they have not only concerning the Muslims, but also concerning the rest of the peoples in this world. And as long as Muslims are cognizant, as long as Muslims are aware of the function of their Islam, the pressures will continue to mount in proportion to this awareness until finally the Muslims come out as their real selves and take serious issue with these powers and tackle them as they are meant to be tackled. They are not meant for observations. They are not meant for research or for study. They are meant to be opposed until the bitter end. This is the lesson of the Qur'an. They will not be content with you until you enlist within their world view. Nothing short of that. And if you don't, they will continue to harass you. And they will continue to kill you. And they will continue to do everything in between. Harassing and eliminating until finally the Muslims succumb to their view, to their theories, to their leadership, to their manipulation, to their exploitative designs, to their monopolies, to their values, to their standards, to their way of thinking, to their way of acting. 
a very important aspect in the contemporary existence that we share as Muslims and as a brotherhood of human beings in this world. وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ And if you were, you, as an individual, or you, as an ummah, or you, as a leadership of the Muslims, on whatever level that you exist, if you were to follow their whimsical designs, after what has come to you of knowledge and wisdom and insight and guidance, then you can expect not Allah to be your superior, He who will support you and will lend a helping hand to you. Is it a surprise today that Muslims pray and their prayers are not answered? They ask Allah and Allah does not reciprocate and they beseech Him for victory and their supplication goes unnoticed by Allah who sees, who hears, and who is aware of everything that makes the life, that makes up the life of this individual. Today is not a day of doom and gloom. Today is a day, in addition to these other days that we are in, that is borrowed from the future. Today, we see al Yahud and al Nasara. We see them nervous. Why should they be nervous? We see them losing control of even the words that they use to describe the Muslims. Losing control of these words. Their vocabulary has been exhausted. Their ideas have been played out. There are no more gimmicks that they can present the people with. And Islam is growing. The heartbeat of Islam can be sensed by these Yahud and these Nasara. Their extensions in the Muslim Ummah the layer of illegitimate rulers are coming together under the supervision of their masters, the United States and the Zionist occupiers of Palestine. And of course, their best kept secret international communism and socialism. These forces, all of them, are silently today working very hard, but not expressing themselves to the public of how they are working. We are actually living in the days of calm that precede the storm that shall break out in the engagement that the Muslims are walking
walking towards in all confidence against these forces. A prime minister of a populous Muslim country pays a visit and his respect and in doing so uncovers the nature of his person. In coming to this land and virtually begging for assistance. This is what happens when Muslims do not read the book of Allah. And this is supposed to be called an Islamic Republic of Pakistan. An Islamic Republic of Pakistan whose Prime Minister is dictated to by voices he cannot afford to ignore that his country and the Muslims should not possess nuclear capabilities. Muslims in all of this world are the only ones who do not have this capability. Why is this Prime Minister so eager to come to listen to such words when he knows in advance that that is what is going to be dictated to him? It is simple. He is scared by another force. He conceives of the force in the neighboring Muslim land of Afghanistan as being a threat to what he calls his nation state. Nationalism and nation states are an aberration in Islamic history, something that will fade away with the increase of the popular mobilization of the Muslims across the Ummah. But he hangs on so dearly to this passing concept. And he comes to secure an artificial creation that came into existence to try to break the backbone of the Muslims in the Indian subcontinent. And that in itself broke into two other separate and what is called independent nations. Pakistan and Bangladesh. And without going into the type of policies that Muslims champion in their own times as legitimate causes, and in the long run they turn out to be yet another fragmentation of the Muslim, of the Muslims trying to coalesce in a base of population strength. Instead of the Muslims being half the population of the Indian subcontinent, eventually they turn to be divided within three nation states. One of them categorically hostile to Muslims and the other two waver between a passive attitude towards Islam in public and then launching a war against it in private and then the other one that hypocritically champions the concept of an Islamic social and political order called the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. How can this be an Islamic Republic? How can this be an Islamic State when its Prime Minister and its lesser officials come running to the enemy of the Muslims? If the Muslims are one Ummah and if this government 
is involved in acts of war against Muslims in other areas. How can a Muslim in the position of leading 100 million other Muslims, how can he justify for himself his visitation to a shaitan al-akbar seeking assistance financially a beggar in all senses of the word begging for 4.2 billion dollars or oh two billion dollars from a machine that is pulverizing the lives of other muslims and yet he has the guts and his media they have the guts to describe it as an islamic republic of pakistan oh muslims of pakistan oh muslims of the ummah your brothers and sisters in islam have nothing against you because you are our brothers and our sisters and we are your brothers and your sisters but these who are in charge of muslim affairs these self-appointed prime ministers and heads of state and cabinets when they come squirming to western and anti-islamic capitals for help and assistance against a perceived enemy the rulers in pakistan are so naive to think that there is serious difference between the soviet union and the united states when it comes to muslim affairs and that is not the case haven't these rulers in pakistan that came into existence as being a shelter for the muslims who were being oppressed in the subcontinent by the british raj and by the hindus by congress one by gandhi and his descendants this state that came to offer the muslims a self a sense of self-identity has lost all reason to exist when it tries to think that the united states will support it against the soviet union and other muslims commit the same mistake when they think that the soviet union has a serious quarrel or a difference with the united states when the muslims are the issue both of these varieties of leaders are in total contradiction of islam and in total error the lesson of afghanistan speaks volumes we see the soviet union pulverized 18 to 20 million muslims what has the united states done they watch from year to year a calamity of millions of people being subjected to the bloodthirsty policies of the Soviets and this land is not far away from Pakistan they are neighbors and what has the United States done to our Muslim brothers in Afghanistan has it offered them any help? Why should it then offer the Muslims in Pakistan the help that is so in demand and in need today in, Afghan, in the Muslim land of Afghanistan? If it is not offering them help today when they really need help, it will never offer 
for the Muslims in Pakistan or in any other land of the Muslims when they are truly in need of that help. So where are the words of Allah? Where are the ayat of Allah? Where are the instructions of Allah? وَلَن تَرْضَ عَنكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَا النَّصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَكُمْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ And if you want, you, the Prime Minister, land that's supposed to mean purity of faith, purity of commitment, purity of conviction, purity of obedience to Allah. If you and the rest of the other Muslim leaders, in a few days, the king of Morocco shall make his debut for only Allah knows how many times to ask and to beg at the doorsteps of the White House and this administration for some type of assistance. The only type of assistance that is forthcoming from the Yahud and the Nasara is the type of money and arms that are given to fight against the Muslims who are growing in numbers and who are growing in commitment in Pakistan, in Morocco, in the north and in the south, in the east and in the west of the Muslim Ummah. This is the only type of guaranteed assistance that Reagan is going to give to his inferiors, the prime ministers and the kings and the presidents who are making their pilgrimage to Washington. And the same thing can be said about those who are deceived by the Soviet Union. They are not, the United States and the Soviet Union are not enemies of each other when the Muslims are concerned. Time and time again, it has been proven that they will come to share and to exchange with each other whatever is necessary to see to it that the Muslims don't raise their head, to see to it that the Muslims remain buried in their status quo, to see to it that Muslim resources are exploited and the Muslims continue to linger in their famine of understanding the Qur'an and in their starvation of applying the Qur'an. This is the only type of guaranteed barter relationship between these munafiks who are as heads of states of the Muslims and their superiors, al-kafirun and al-mushrikun. But we should not think that because the Western media is silent and they low-key the developments among us Muslims, that our commitment to Islam is diminishing or being reduced in any way. It is growing. Our confidence in Allah is growing. The Muslims today are not the Muslims 100 years ago. The Muslims today are standing up. And when they are not reporting the life and death position that the Muslims are in, that certifies that we have taken a stand for once and for all. The Prophet والسلام, says, Muru bil ma'roof, as he relates this from Allah in a hadith, could see. Muru bil ma'roof, wanhau anil munkar, qabla an tasaluni 
فلا أعطيكم وتدعوني فلا أجيبكم وتستنصروني فلا أنصركم أدعو الله سبحانه وأنتم على يقين بإجابته واستغفروا الله تعالى إنه يغفر الذنوب جميعا ولعنة الله على الظالمين الحمد لله الذي هدى وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه أولي النهى والتقى آله وصحبه أولي النهى والتقى Brothers and sisters in Islam In the previous few weeks the Islamic forces the only Islamic forces in this world that are not artificial armies that take their orders from Washington or from Moscow via the Munafiq net network of heads of state the only Islamic forces that are independent of Moscow and of Washington they took the issue of Islam inside and across the international boundaries the artificial lines that carved up the Muslim Ummah and in the process they liberated the area of Mehran and beyond that they liberated other adjacent and corresponding areas of Iraq and Western journalists were invited over come on if you are true to representing the truth come and see for your own selves and write what you have seen and the Western journalists came and what did they do they came they saw they were individually impressed but they left numbed they left without a word that was mentioned by and large in the Western media as if this success of the Islamic forces by ignoring it it will go away by not reporting it it will seem like the Muslims have not scored a victory but by ignoring it they are sending a message that is far more profound than if they would have reported that incident if they would have reported it they would have done so because they are relaxed to the fact that this war is still contained they can supply one side with ammunitions and arms and supply the other side with ammunitions and arms and they can tell the rest of the world audience that Muslims are killing Muslims with the injustice of the statement but when they did not report this success when they were silent because of the victory of Islam that means that they are psychologically and socially defeated because they cannot communicate this fact to the rest of the world this is how deeply defeated they have become and these battles were fought when the temperature was 30 degrees hotter than it is right now right now it is in the lower 90s those battles a few weeks ago a couple of weeks ago and as they continue up until now are fought in temperatures souring above 122 degrees what makes the Muslims step out into a boiling and burning inferno to wage war against a superior military force with the consent and the support of the 
the United States and Israel and the Soviet Union that is at war against Islam. Let us not forget the war. Let us not forget the fact that the Soviet Union is occupying Afghanistan and killing our brothers and sisters in their own homes. And at the same time, it is the prime, the foremost, and the basic supplier of arms to the Ba'athis in Baghdad. It is an active war against Islam. And regardless and in spite of the teaming up of Zionism and imperialism and communism against the forces of Islam that stood throughout these storms independently for seven years plus and in spite of this, the forces of Islam months ago liberated the area of Thaw. Weeks ago liberated the area of Mahran. And years ago liberated the area of Majnoon Islands. And in the coming months, and in the coming weeks, and in the coming years, the Muslim forces will push on, will march forth to liberate not only the occupied lands of Iraq, but also the occupied lands of Palestine and the occupied lands of the rest of the Muslims. Beyond Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Beyond this point of fact, Looking at this area of success within the Muslim lands, the Muslims on a popular basis continue to stack their ranks with commitment and with devotion to topple the munafiqeen who are in charge of Muslim affairs. Their heads will roll, and when their heads roll, their destiny will be Jahannam, and sure, Muslims will spill their blood, but their destiny is Al-Jannah. وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِعَهْدِهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ And who can be more fulfilling to his promise than Allah? This is the commitment. This is the sacrifice. This is the shahada of Islam, which is beginning to disturb the enemies of Islam. Let them be disturbed by their silence. Let them be perturbed by their words. Both ways, Islam will continue. The Muslims will march on to the battlefields. These unreported events that are happening in Egypt, in Cairo, in Asyut, in other areas, in occupied Palestine, in Lebanon, in Jordan, in Syria, in Iraq. Let them go unnoticed by the Kafirs. That doesn't mean much when they are noticed by Allah and when Allah is marking them and registering them for Allah has his ways to defeat these Kafirs and these Mushriks. Is it by coincidence that after the Muslims were the targets of these superpowers that virtually the whole confidence in the space program by this administration has been shattered every time they send up a classified mission, Allah's power brings it down. Every time they try to be silent about the Muslims, Allah breaks in through their front lines and through their news items. Is it by chance and by coincidence that when the Muslims fought these battles in the highest temperatures at the war front, that dryness and drought and failing crops have become the news items here a few miles to the south of us all the way down to Florida. In some of these states it has become against the law to have your faucet running for more than four continuous minutes. They can try to play their games but their games will backfire because you cannot trick Allah. You cannot deceive Allah. You cannot 
الآيات أو تمون منوذر الله يخادعون الله والذين آمنوا وما يخدعون إلا أنفسهم وما يخادعون إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون في قلوبهم مرض فزادهم الله مرضا ولهم عذاب أليم عذاب أليم بما كانوا يكذبون اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ولا تجعله ملتبسا علينا واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك وإنه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من عاديت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت فلك الحمد على ما قضيت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وصلى الله على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب جهنم ومن عذاب القبر ومن فتنة المحيا والممات ومن شر فتنة المسيح الدجال ربنا إننا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين قل من يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء ويجعلكم خلفاء الأرض أإله مع الله قليل ما تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروا له ولا تكفرون والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق رغما عن الطواغيت وتواصوا بالصبر رغما عن المنافقين ربنا عليك توكلنا وإليك أنبنا وإليك المصير إن الله يأمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها وإذا حكمتم بين الناس أن تحكموا بالعدل إن الله نعما يعظكم به إن الله كان سميعا بصيرا ومن أظلم ممن منع مساجد الله أن يذكر في اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم قوموا إلى صلاتكم واجعلوا بيوتكم قبلة وادعوا الله واسألوه واستنصروه نعم المولى ونعم النصير